welcome. I'm Melinda Akinlami tonight. Shiite leader Sheikh Ibrahim El Zadzaki alleges poor treatment in Indian hospital where he and his wife are receiving medical attention. Federal government faults allegations. Family of one of the three policemen and a civilian killed by soldiers in Taraba demand justice as investigative team from the defense headquarters visit state to unravel circumstances behind the incident. President Buhari states resolved to tackle banditry and kidnapping in the country as he meets with persons displaced as a result of attacks in Castina State. And China describes anti-government protests in Hong Kong as near terrorism. On Business News Tonight, economic analyst clarifies the impact of President Buhari's directive to the central bank on ban of forex for food import. On Sports News Tonight, Fortuna Dusseldorf goalkeeper Maduka Okoye and Glasgow Rangers midfielder Joe Arebu set for Super Eagles debut after being called up for a friendly against Ukraine on September the 10th. And from Abuja, EFCC arranged son-in-law and lawyer to PDP presidential candidate in the 2019 general elections, Alhaji Atiku Abubakar, before a federal high court in Lagos on charges of money laundering. The leader of the Islamic movement in Nigeria, Sheikh Ibrahim El Zadzaki, is a legend that the condition at the Indian hospital where he and his wife Zinat are undergoing treatment is worse than that of Nigeria. Mr. El Zadzaki mentioned this in an audio that has since gone viral on social media. And he says he and his wife were initially happy that they will finally be treated in the Indian hospital in line with the recommendations of some foreign doctors who had visited him in Nigeria. He said that contrary to the arrangement, they have had difficulties trusting the treatment they would get in the hospital and that the whole process looked like another detention as the door to their hospital rooms were heavily guarded by security operatives. He is therefore demanding a change in location of their treatment, especially to other volunteer countries like Malaysia, Indonesia or Turkey. The chairman of the Free El Zagzaki Committee, Mr. Abubakar Abdurrahman, speaks more on the comments by the Sheikh Ibrahim El Zagzaki. After the arrival of Sheikh Zekzeki and his wife at Medanta Hospital in New Delhi, India, Nigerian government, through its security agent that escorted him, acted in contrary to what was earlier stated in the Kaduna High Court by devising new types of plots to frustrate his doctors from offering emergency treatment to the Sheikh, whose health has seriously deteriorated as a result of the gunshot inflicted on him by the Nigerian army, Sheikh Zazaki himself, in an audio clip from the hospital, indicates that the security agents are colluding with foreign security agents believed to be working for the interests of American government there by violating the Nigerian court ruling. However, officials of Bendata Hospital have been explaining the situation at the facility. One of the medical personnel said that the complaints raised by Sheikh El Zagzaki had been addressed. IHRC is the organization which is looking after the treatment of Sheikh Zagzaki here. Currently, uh, today is 14 August, 6 p.m. I am at Vedanta Hospital. And uh, the latest reports are that, that uh, the doctors uh, which the Sheikh wanted has, are given the access. Uh, in the morning, there were some issues which have been resolved. And we request, a humble request to all the love of the people, all of our mominin and friends who have a great love for Sheikh Zaksaki to pray for him. To pray for him and um, uh, please be responsible when you use and forward messages in social media. There should be no confusion regarding it. The, we will be reporting daily regarding what's happening in Medanta Hospital and um, you will be updated regularly about it. In the meantime, the federal government has been reacting to comments by Sheikh El Zagzaki and members of his proscribed groups regarding the medical trip to India. 
A statement released today by the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Information and Culture, Mrs. Grace Izupe, on behalf of the federal government, says the choice of Mendata Hospital for the treatment taken by the IMN leader and his wife and was, was a choice by the IMN leader and his wife and not the federal government. The statement says the decision was not opposed as Mr. El Zagzaki also demanded that some of his aides and personal doctors be allowed to go on the trip with them, a request with the federal government granted. It adds that the situation changed when they got to India, where, according to her, Mr. El Zagzaki started displaying ulterior motives against laid-down procedures. The statement says, and I quote, He requested that his passport be handed over to him, but the state officials would not budge to his pressure. The situation became worse in India as he refused to subject himself to preliminary medical checks. In addition, he demanded free movement and access to visitors of all kinds as requested to be allowed to check into a five-star hotel instead of being admitted in hospital. Now, the request was refused on the ground that he came into the country for medicals and was not a tourist. The statement adds that Mr. El Zagzaki also demanded that police protection be withdrawn from him by the Indian authorities. Furthermore, the federal government says Mr. El Zagzaki requested to nominate doctors of his choice to join the ones assigned by Mandata Hospital to perform medical treatment on him and his wife, a situation which created a stalemate, forcing the hospital to insist that he would not dictate to them on the choice of medical personnel to carry the required medical treatment. The statement adds again, and I quote, The Indian authorities have expressed willingness to return him to Nigeria with immediate effect. This is on the account that they will not allow him use their country to internationalize his group's activities against his background. The Nigerian government wishes to commend the stand of the Indian government as well as apologize to her for the unruly behavior of El Zagzaki. Similarly, the attention of the public and indeed the international community is hereby drawn to these unfortunate developments. End of quote. The statement concludes by saying that the government will ensure the prosecution of El Zagzaki through due process, if and when he is returned to Nigeria. The family of one of the slain police officers allegedly killed by soldiers in Taraba State is demanding justice over the killing of their son. A brother of the slain police officer, Mr. Andrew Adaile, wants the federal government and international organizations to conduct a thorough investigation into the matter and bring the perpetrators to justice. He says the family is not asking for any form of compensation from the federal government for a transparent investigation that will serve as a deterrent to others. Whose side are they on? And whose payroll are these military personnel? These are many more questions we demand answers to. What was the, why was the kingpin kidnapper released? They have done their job, apprehended the kidnapper, on their way back to Abuja, army operative unleashed barrages of fire. And it was in the hell of this one shot that cut down all the government police officers. We demand to know why and why the, uh, the, the kidnapper was released. And the effort of the government police officers were not only compromised, their life was equally cut short. This is an outrage and we demand justice. Staying with security matters, especially the allegations of extrajudicial killings against the army, the panel set up by the defense headquarters to investigate the killings of three police officers and a civilian in Taraba State arrived in Jalingo today to begin investigation. The panel, led by Rear Admiral Ibikule Olaya, arrived at the Taraba government house where they met with Governor Dario Sishako behind closed doors. After the meeting, members of the panel refused to comment on what they discussed with the governor as they immediately proceeded to Vukari in Ibi local government area where the incident occurred. The panel was set up on the orders of the president who instructed the defense headquarters to get to the root of the matter and unravel the circumstances that led to the killing. The army and police had been trading words on the incident, which led to the escape of a kidnapped suspect, Mr. Hamisu Bala. Meanwhile, the Ogun State Commissioner of Police, Mr. Bashir Makaba, has ordered a thorough investigation into the Sherry Day shooting incident in Ogun State, allegedly by soldiers. 
The state police chief says four soldiers posted to Kara Market during the Salah celebration left their beats and went to Isheri Olofi, where the indigents of the town were celebrating the annual Isheri Day Festival. Our correspondent, Dari Du, has this report. <laughs> Isheri Olofi Kara, a border community between Ogun State and Lagos State, is griefing. Sympathizers wear gloomy faces as they gather at the palace of the traditional ruler where they now seek solace. Those injured are also mending their wounds. The Olofi of Isheri gives an account of how three members of his community were killed during the celebration. I've left there by 5.30 with all my ships back to my palace. Later on, it was 7.30, 6 to 7.30. So I hear the gunshot sporadically. Later on, I see the rushing of people running to my palace. And I call all my ships, what is happening? What is happening there? They said there was an army invaded the uh, primary school. We also visited the venue where a planning was, member of the festival narrated our day of celebration God. turned violent. Siri is the son of the owner of the Kara market here. So when Siri came, he came with soldiers. He first came with two. And um, this is the 31st year that we have been celebrating the Sherry Day here. We have never recorded any violence for 30 years. The police have also corroborated this account and its spokesperson in Ogun State says full investigation has been launched and the soldiers not unknown. The soldier was taken to the hospital and uh, some of the injured civilian too were taken to the hospital. But unfortunately one of the injured civilian was taken to the same hospital where this soldier man was taken to. And on getting there, some of the soldiers who came to visit this injured soldier, they saw this man on the hospital bed and they went there and stabbed him to death in presence of the medical doctor. And uh, we believe that this is barbaric. This is the hate of man in humanity to man. And because of that, uh, a comprehensive investigation has been, has been launched about it and uh, the soldiers, uh, they were identifiable and any moment from now we are going to get them arrested and uh, the normal process of the law will be visited on them. So, uh, With this investigation launched, the people of the Sharia law in community are now relying on authorities to get justice on the tragedy that struck on the day of celebration. Daridu. Channel Television News. In part two, after the break, more on the extrajudicial killing. The Executive Secretary of the National Human Rights Commission, Mr. Anthony Ojuku, joins us from our Abuja studios. Join us again. <laughs>